Hi, welcome. Chris Petri here. Thanks for coming by. Glad you've made it here, and we're going to have a wonderful time today. We're going to be creating a, a gorgeous painting in Paris, Paris France. Uh, it's a Parisian scene. It's going to be of the Allais Saint Andre Cafe uh, Brasserie. And we'll go and we'll look up our photo on our mobile device. I'll zoom in. So I'm going to work from my mobile device for now. And then I also have my laptop set up across from me on my uh, work table here, my art table. So I'm just going to show the, the, um, the painting here. And um, so this is the, the photograph of uh, the cafe in Paris, France. And so we're going to... I looked this up on my uh, laptop, so I have the same photograph on my laptop set across from me. And this way I'll work from that. It's a larger picture, obviously. This is a little smaller version on my phone, but this kind of gives you the idea of the, I'm going to be working from that. And I just looked up uh, Paris cafes and uh, found this picture. So I'll, that's what I'll be working from. We'll zoom back out. And I always mention um, I use uh, Arches uh, rough paper for this painting. So um, we'll get a little more texture with that. Sometimes I like Arches and uh, Fabriano uh, rough papers. I also use satin, Arches satin paper. Those are like the three main papers I use. Arches rough, Arches satin, and Arches um, uh, Fabriano Artistico paper. Um, so sometimes if I'm practicing, I'll, I'll pick up like uh, practice, you know, uh, pads of paper, which will be student grade. So I use a lot of student grade paper when I practice. Um, and just do small compositions, or if I'm working on some uh, portrait work or some uh, the figure, human form, I'm doing a lot of practice on that now. So I use less expensive paper because I'm just really trying to get a lot of time in on it, and I'm not really so much trying to do a finished painting so much. I'm trying to just get my practice in and, and, and work on the, uh, the feel of everything. So, so on this painting, we're going to just start off, and I'm going to get my... My hash marks, you'll, you'll notice um, hash marks are good. Um, so I'm going to look at the paint, uh, photograph and say about, let's say if we broke it into thirds. So if I broke this into thirds, the pic picture this way, into thirds, the this third of the painting on this side, this is where the building starts, uh, uh, the, the cafe. Le Saint Andre Cafe. And it's a beautiful cafe, and we, we can see people out in the front and having coffee and, and some delicious food. And so we're going to say that's where the building is going to start. And then as we go toward the lower section of the painting, I would say approximately. A quarter of the way up is where the uh, tables and the bottoms of the tables and chairs start and where we can see the sidewalk, the concrete sidewalk. So we'll a uh, quarter of the way. So if we go half is here, half and then another quarter here and another quarter here. So it's a little lower than half probably or a little lower, lower than a quarter. So this might be a quarter here. We'll go a little lower, lower like here. That should be good. That might be a little more than that. Let's go here. Okay. Now, um, I would make another mark just maybe for reference. Um, I'll make the, um, the light post. There's a beautiful uh, lamp on the sidewalk here. I'm gonna put that lamp height about here. And the lamp's about almost at the bottom of the painting, so I'll put a little mark on the approximately there. And 
and I'll, I think one more, I'm going to do one more, uh, let's say two more. I would say the, about a third of the way, similar to this, on this side is where the building over here on the right side sort of starts to angle. So I'll put that little angle mark there, that's where the building starts to, the sidewalk on the other side of the street starts to go across the picture. And, and the lamp is about, so I'll put the lamp here too, so lamp is top of lamp and then the lamp is here, the street light. Okay, so this is good. Now, if you're, if you're really solid with your drawing, and, you know, you don't have to do this so much, but um, I find that um, it's, it's good to get, uh, do this, and I, I do this on a more complicated painting, and this painting is, is you know, this is not an easy painting to draw, and, uh, you know, an, an easy drawing to do, and an easy painting. It's, you know, there are some different angles going, and um, there's a lot of detail in it. We're going to simplify the detail. We'll, we'll explain how we'll do that. Sometimes when we see pictures of uh, the beautiful Paris, you know, Paris, France is beautiful. There's tons of gorgeous architecture everywhere. And some of those details sometimes can be like a little nerve wracking. You, 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 I'm saying to myself, how am I going to capture these details? But that's when we just have to simplify things and just realize that in a painting, we can just key in on, key in on a few areas where the details are and the rest we can kind of just calm down and, and relax those areas uh, in, in a way like in a sense of painting and, and the details of capturing those uh, parts of the painting in a more very, you know, maybe loose fashion, a more abstract fashion, so that we don't get carried away with having to do every detail. There's also other ways to do it where we just sort of leave out a lot of things um, and sort of make like a vignette of sorts. You can do things that way by reducing uh, details, by vignetting things. But let's, let's go with a, you know, with our plan here, maybe making it a, a more loose, fun painting, you know, and uh, sort of, you know, try to capture the essence of the of this beautiful scene, and we'll just see how it goes, and we'll start out. We'll, I'm going to start with the building up here, and okay, so. I'm just going to capture this long vertical line of the building. The building kind of steps in here. Actually, the building is a little wider at the base where the cafe is on this first floor of the building, and then it, it steps in a little bit. It's kind of... Uh, and then we have... Uh, we'll go lightly here, and then... Again, we said here was about where the bottom of the tables are. So I'll just make a light sketch over here with that. And uh, here, I'm gonna go with this awning here. This is a white awning. And then we have over here the awning coming forward. Let me let me work from the right side this way, and then I can kind of get a feel for where this other awning is going to be over here. So sometimes it's good to work from one section where you have your details, and then you work from that area outward from those from that area so that you can get the scale of things somewhat. So here we see there's a under here, there is another awning. And then there's the main doorway, like so. Then in here is all dark. 
It's the interior of the cafe. It's going to be dark. We're going to make sure we do this in a very dark uh, tonal value. And then here, as we're going across, we can see we can see the other awning here. And there's the other section where the door is. And then we can see some other details. So there's some, there's some chalkboards with some menus and interesting things like that. There's one on the other side over here. Now here's where I'm not going to get into a tremendous amount of detail. I'm just going to sort of get some basic uh, details of this. And then there's some, there's some raw iron railings here. And on either side of the window, there is some structural ornamentation that supports the balcony above. We're not really seeing the balcony too much in this picture, but we can kind of see it turning like this. So that's the balcony above, and there's And again, I'm not getting to, you know, this could be a, an hour or two of drawing if we were getting into the real fine details of drawing this picture. But we're just, again, we're trying to just capture the essence of what we're seeing. So I just wanted to capture those major architectural And then these are pretty even, so I'm going to go with even across here. These are even segments of uh, stonework. And those also, they, tra they travel down this way, so then we have It's darker under here on this bottom portion of the, and there's going to be people at the cafe tables. We'll, we'll do the cafe tables in a second. We're going to take a break. We don't want to go too too much with too much drawing without taking a break because our concentration will start to fade, and then then we're going to have problems with our drawing. So let's make sure we remember to take breaks. So that's a perfect time now to take a break. We just did the left section of the um, drawing, which is the cafe, Le Saint Andre. In Paris, France, we did our left side. This would be how we would do it if we were out on the scene here. We're in Paris. We're going to paint. We're maybe across the street. We have our easel set up or, or just we're sitting in a chair with our sketchbook or in a cafe across the street with our sketchbook. And we're just trying to capture the essence of what we're seeing. And then we'll just take a break and then we'll come back and we'll start to work in the other portions of the, the street and the sidewalks on the right hand side uh, of this uh, composition. Okay, and we've had a break. We're uh, just uh, getting back uh, to our drawing. We completed our section here on the left of the cafe. And uh, it's in Paris, France. We're enjoying the beauty of the architecture and the interesting feeling of uh, uh, people having some coffee and some uh, dinner or lunch. Perhaps uh, it's just uh, early in the morning, people are having some coffee. Uh, so we just have some fun in our mind and pretend we're here in the scene. And uh, <clears throat> the next thing we're going to work on is the. Um, let's get some of the angles here. We're going to save the figures for last because those are more technical. So we'll, we'll maybe let, let those go for now. Um, 
better to do the things that are a little more simple first and then move on to st leaving the leaving the more difficult areas to last that's that's my idea this way we can kind of go through the drawing get most of the drawing completed feel good about it there's nothing here too challenging a um, couple angles and, and so forth but nothing too uh, tremendously difficult but then when the, we get to the figures over here sitting at the tables in the cafe area in front here that's a little more challenging. That's going to be more of a difficult uh, time for myself. So that's why I'm going to let that go till last. All right. So now we're going to go and we're going to say, all right, we see the um, the street across the street from here are the buildings, and we want to locate the um, angle of the street. So we said about here was the angle of the street where it starts in the picture. Sometimes I'll hold my pencil out and look, I'll hold my pencil out and hold it up to the photograph and then use my pencil to sort of see where what the angle is of the of the line. So if you can imagine, I'll use my pencil just to get the angle of things. I'll look up, I'll kind of put it in front of my eyes, my pencil in front of my, my head and my face and my eyes, and then I'll tip the pencil and line it up with the lines in the photograph. So I use my pencil as a, a like a measuring tool and an angle to get angles and things sometimes. So I'll hold my pencil up. And then I bring it like this. So it starts here just like we had it in our sketch when we did our uh, hash marks. So that's where the street starts about over here on this side where it comes into view. And it's about, um, about a, not quite halfway between the top of this awning and here. So if we use this as a gauge and we say, okay, that's the, that's the amount there. And then we look across at the picture and we say, how much is that? So it's about a third. So about a third of the way. Okay, that's, we got the angle there. And we will also notice that there are a few curb areas. There's a curb area here in front of the... Um, I'm going to go really lightly, super light. And lamp is about here. And that comes out to about here. And then it turns this way. Okay, good. So we have our little bit of that uh, curb line here in front of the cafe. Um, we can make some interesting, maybe some hash marks here. We might might go with that. Maybe not. We we'll just usually it's it's probably usually better not to go with too much improvisation if if, if it's not in the painting. So, or a photograph. So, if you're working from a photograph, and sometimes you sometimes you can imp you know improvise and add some things in there to make things more interesting, but when it comes to like things with angles, it can be a little difficult. So, I'm gonna not maybe do the. I was gonna do some striping on the on the road here with some white stripes uh, on the pavement, but I think I'm gonna leave this go. Okay, now I'm gonna do some shadowing. I just want to make sure I capture this shadow. So I put a shadow line here. That's where the light's coming down in between the buildings. So this actually the light, we could just pretend we'll, we'll make our light insignia. Light's coming down the center of the two buildings, down this street. And then we're going to look at the angles of the buildings here. I'll start here and just do some very light. Again, this is more minimized. We're not going to get too much details in the um,
and I'm just going to get a few, a couple lines going here. And then across from here, approximately where the wrought iron is in the uh, window, there's a door here. So this is the, we have a door here. Across from that is a, a rooftop that comes down a little and goes across. Nothing too just something to add a little more interest over here and another awning pretty much close to this same And we're gonna let's start working on our lamp. Here, I I might I might use a ruler. So let's get the top of the lamp. It's almost to the top of the page here. Uh, the top of the lamp is approximately the top of the window. Here. So maybe I'll go a little bit taller. And. And again, the lamp doesn't have to be perfect. It, it, we just try to get the over shape of it. And then we will bring this I guess the most, one of the, well, the important thing about this lamp over here, the street lamp, street light, is that we don't make it, make it too big or too small, you know, for the scale of the painting. So here, it looks pretty close to the, to the scale that I'm looking for. It's, uh, looks pretty good. So I won't get too overly worried about it, but I definitely wouldn't want to, I would want to keep an eye on the scale of that just to, you know, so it looks, it looks real believable. And then there's a, a ball shape there on that. And let's best to um, get a straight line first, a plumb line first down. And then from there flared out with two lines on either side. So I would do a center line and then two lines on either side of that center line. So you get the center line straight, plumb, up and down, pretty much straight, you know, or plumb, vertically. Then we go on both sides of that line to, to capture the, uh, the actual post of the lamp. doesn't have to be perfect again we're going to do this more loosely and then from there we can do a little ornamentation just to let ourselves know there's some ornamentation on that and then some more ornamentation here there's another uh, bit of ornamentation so it's kind of stepping out and flaring out wider as it goes down. And then there's like the last portion of it, which is like this. And so that's good. And again, it flares out again here.
Again, we're not going too overboard with details. We're just trying to kind of capture it. You know, it's the lamp, the light, and then the post comes down. It gets wider and wider and wider, and then it gets to this point, and it starts to have some ornamentation on it, just so we have a little bit of that. It gets wider, and then it gets most wide here, and then it's got another flare out at the bottom. So you can do it like this, or you can just even maybe do it more simple. Maybe just one post, and then make the larger section on the bottom like this. You know, it doesn't have to be as detailed. I'm just doing it so I, I have more to work with when I start painting. And that's the thing, when we start painting, we'd rather have a little more information to work with versus less, because then we don't have to do it much guesswork. We can just sort of do it like we're, we've drawn it, or you can leave some stuff out. Once we start painting, it's not going to be so noticeable. And we can also just do a little erasing. To lose some of the pencil lines, and... We have some more vertical lines here for the buildings. We have some dormers here. Incredibly beautiful architecture. So we have some dormers on this rooftop here in the distance. Again, um, we're not going to get too uh, overly detailed here. Just some vertical lines. So that when we're painting, we have um, we have some ideas of I think that's good like that. And then we can do our angular lines of the floors of the building over here. Let's find our level line. So I guess when we're working with buildings, this is just kind of a thing to remember if, if we're doing architecture like this uh, on a street scene. You just find, uh, as you're looking across from the scene, or if you have a photograph, of course we're working from a photograph here, you just, we would want to try to find that level line across on this building over here on the right side. We'd want to kind of find where the level line of the floor is. So the first floor across the street on this building pretty much is about there, which is around the tops of that awning here. So that's level. So then we kind of see that's the level line there. And then you can see this lines are already starting to radiate out this way. So it kind of works with the star pattern. And uh, usually with the star pattern, it's just, you know, if you start at one point, if this is the level point of the building, let's say this is our cafe here. Here's our building over here. The lines are just going to slowly um, start to ang angle this way as we're looking at this at the buildings on the right hand side. Here's all the lines we drew. And then here's the level line. There's the awning over here. Here's our, our post, our light lamp post. And then the other lines might trail a little bit this way. And of course we see the sidewalk is over here like this. So if you can imagine it's just... Sort of like if we went here, everything is just, you know, a star pattern going out this way. Just like that. So here's our level line. And then things just start to go upwards. And the next floor up is in some areas. Some areas are stop and go. Some floors are taller than others. But for the most part, this line here is the wall. And, the, and this is where the building corner is. And then the building turns this way on a right angle. So for the most part, that's the, that's the angles here just so we have that feel. I think that's enough information. We have just some ang angular lines running parallel. We have our vertical lines running vertical, just so we have those kind of like guides for ourselves as, we working, as we're working in the painting and we're doing some 
detail work. And okay, let's now is a good time. Let's take another break. We'll take another break. Then we'll go in and we'll, we'll do some of the figures here at the cafe with the tables and chairs and figures and the enjoyable people of Paris. They're having their coffee or some lunch or dinner. Um, and we'll we'll start up with our uh, more detailed uh, section here. And but first, let's take a quick break. Okay, we had a enjoyable break and we're going to be back here doing some more of the details. Um, we're going to do the figures um, in the front of the cafe. So let's let's get the um, tables here. I'm going to do a table here. And when I look, the people are about not quite, the people having uh, at the tables are not quite out to the end of this awning. They're in a little bit, so let's, I'll make myself a, a line there just to sort of get the feel for the, and I think what I'll do is, um, there's a person here. sitting by the doorway. So I think what I'll do is uh, I will I will capture just a few maybe of the parts of the figure. So maybe an arm by the table, one leg, one arm, that's it for this figure here by the door. And then there's another, um, and then there's a, there's a bollard, which is a post that's set into the concrete roadway so that if cars come by or bicyclists, they won't um, maybe, uh, infiltrate into the area where the people are having coffee. So it's a safety uh, post almost there for the people that are having their coffee and lunch. So I'm going to... And the bollards are here. And then there's another one. So they're about to... Uh, they don't have to be perfectly straight. There's a figure there. Then here's another figure. Let's shoulders, head. Shoulders and head is about good. Um, I'm not going to worry about any arms over here or any legs really. Just that shoulder and head is fine for this figure. We're going to put a lot of dark color, you know, dark uh, tonal values in here where the figures are sitting because it is a darker section of the painting. There's some lights that are you know, sort of, uh, you can see some light bouncing off some of the tables. Um, there's somebody with a white shirt over here, like a t-shirt maybe, a white or a white top. So I'll put their, they're there having coffee and they're on the other side. And there's someone else over here too. So I think if you do three or four or five partial figures and I say partial like you know maybe some shoulders and heads shoulders and heads might be good that's about it really and if you want to put a leg in or something just to that makes it a little more interesting you know too if you put in like a leg with you know there's a leg in that um, photograph so the person has their legs crossed and they're sort of relaxing and a little mark, a little indication of that is is good too. It kind of makes more it makes things more interesting. And then they're shadowing under the tables, and there's. I would put a couple lines just to indicate some chairs. Again, I'm not going to to try to draw the figures and the tables in detail on this painting. Is really 
doesn't really make any sense because it's only a small portion of the painting. However, if you were to create a painting in the main focal point of the painting, and the large section of the painting is someone at cafe tables or people at cafe tables, let's say, then you would want to develop more details with the chairs and tables. But since this is really just in shadow, it's dark, we're just trying to let the viewer looking at the painting know there's some figures here, they're having coffee and, and so forth. And um, I'm going to minimize this figure a little bit. And then on this side as well, we have someone at a table. Let's, uh, there. And again, there's a table and some chairs. A couple of vertical lines for the chairs and tables. And one more person. And again, just some real, very, uh, well, when we start painting, you'll see how this is going to be minimized. We're not really going to get too much into detail on all the figures here. We have perhaps a um, barmaid. She's working here. She's standing in the doorway. Um, And then across here we have the cafe sign. We'll make a little, now we'll do some more details here. We'll, we'll do this here. Cafe. Neon lights there, so we can use some orange, cadmium orange paint there. Uh, over the top of some darker color we'll put in there. And then, uh, And then we can up here, I will very lightly sketch in And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, we can make this sign larger. But I think this is good. This will be fine. And let's, uh, we'll start painting. So let's take another break. Um, we're going to, let's just do a few more bollards here, just so we have, um, And then there's also a, um, now what happened here is this post is sort of, <clears throat> doesn't quite work with the scale. I might have made the figures a little small here. So we're not really going to get worried about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the base of the post. erase the base of the post and then just make the post run out of the picture like that <clears throat> that'll make more sense I guess to do that and uh, there's some signs here and there's a round sign here
but and a dark window here and there and I'll try to maybe capture a couple of the darker lines and then over here there's a, so some spots of dark windows here and there and we'll capture that and there's another there's some there's an arch doorway there and then on this line here we have some of those um, some of the wrought iron uh, railings with some flower boxes and they're the same up there so just a little indications of those like that okay I think we're ready to do some painting now what you're going to be amazed at is when we go in to do the painting even though we did quite a bit of detail on the drawing our paintings gonna be much more loose and the paintings gonna go a lot quicker so we're not going to really we we put the de the more the detail goes into the drawing but then when we go to paint let's just we'll be more free flowing and we'll we'll see how it goes and you'll you'll see how we can make this all um, flow together as one cohesive piece of artwork and uh, instead of maybe fragmenting it so much so it looks much better if we can just get a couple really nice washes maybe we'll do like three glazings we'll do like a real light glazing then we'll go over it and start doing some of the middle tones and then we'll do the darker tones so let's take another break and we'll come back and we'll we'll start getting ready and prepped for uh, doing the paint on this Okay, we had a nice break and we're gonna uh, get started on our painting. First thing I wanted to do is just before we start painting, I wanted to just sort of have the the feel of um, the tonal values in this picture. So what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna say that this section is gonna be sort of a, you know, a middle dark. So we're going to see these kind of tones on this side, over here. Okay, on this side of the painting, it's more light. So you're going to see this tonal value, sort of a very light. On the awning, you're going to see maybe some you know, really bright whites here on the awning and you can change the color of the awning you can make it a different color if you want but it's good to stick with pretty much the, the photograph that we're working from so that's going to be the pattern of the tonal values and then of course the uh, really really dark darkest darks will be in the doorway so we would just kind of make a note of that you know we have some darks uh, there and then here along the tables um, and a little bit around the that there's some more darks and there's some maybe the ornamentation up here is a few more really really dark tonal values there and then if I just blot this up a little bit so I can and then of course the the, the lamp that's going to be a dark a very very dark dark and then the sign a couple signs here and there and then the bollards are going to be very dark And there's a couple darks here too, with this awning. And then a couple spots of darks here and there. That might be a little bit darker. So that's kind of going to be the, the overall um, darks and lights in the painting. So the buildings on the right, they're going to stay very, very light. This building's more in shadow. It's going to be darker tonal values. And then around the doorway and some of the figures, that's really, really deep dark shadow there. So that's going to be the darkest darks. And then you have some of the light on the roadway and the building area and some of the awning. That's very bright light. And then again, over here on the right, your darkest dark is going to be uh, on this side of the painting will be like the, the lamp, the lights, uh, light and light post here and a couple of the signs. And this is over here is a um, awning on the other building. 
So there's some different uh, darks here and there. But that's basically going to be how it's going to look when we're finished. And if we look at our photograph and we squint our eyes, so if you squint your eyes slightly when you're looking at the photograph of this painting, you'll notice that that's sort of the, the tonal value pattern, the light, the light and darks of the painting. So we're going to start now and we'll... Of course, we're going to be using our uh, colors. I'll use a larger brush here. And the first wash we'll go with will be uh, yellow ochre. A little bit of alizarin crimson. A little bit of cerulean blue over here. All right, let's <clears throat> get started here. So we're gonna little bit of uh, cerulean blue at the top of the painting, very light. And then we'll start working in our that beautiful uh, yellow ochre. And that's pretty much a little darker on this side. And if you go over a spot you think you want to keep uh, light, no worries. A little tissue and you can just blot up the paint a little bit and and really really light over here. So you can see I did a very, very light wash, so we're doing, we're doing the glazing technique here. And of course it's uh, mostly just uh, yellow ochre and alizarin crimson. And a little more cerulean blue, just for the cool. And that should be good. Now we're going to let that set. Usually this takes about maybe 10-15 minutes until it uh, is ready. We can, we can start going in and, and putting our uh, other paint on, our second glazing. So let's let this dry a little bit. Um, and we'll just, again, we'll mention our colors. We used uh, cerulean blue at the very top up here where the sky is, very little bit of sky up here in this picture. Then as we work down, we're using yellow ochre and alizarin crimson just to get some nice warm undertones here, under colors, under the main colors we'll put on after this. Actually, some of this is gonna stay just as it is. And again, uh, alizarin crimson, yellow ochre all the way, and then maybe here at the bottom, a little cooler cerulean blue at the base of the painting at the bottom where there's cooler shadows and again we're going to add more shadows and darker tonal values once we uh, uh, come back and we're going to do our second glazing and again if you find you go over a couple of lights no problem you take a tissue and blot up a little bit of paint Okay, let's take another break. We're going to let this uh, dry a little bit, uh, and then we'll we'll come back and start adding in our uh, darker washes. All 
Okay, so we've let this uh, take a little bit of a... Um, we've taken a break and we've let this dry a little bit. The paper is still damp and you can see how it's still buckling. Um, with the paper buckling, uh, we just have to work with that. Um, it, you know, it might even be to an advantage that it'll make the painting look maybe more free and, you know, a little more... There might be some more waviness to the lines, you know what I mean? Like, it won't be as, like... Uh, tight looking with like maybe perfectly straight lines. So let the let the paper if it starts to buckle on you a little bit, let it let it work to your advantage. Don't worry about it. Just we're going to try to paint this through now and and not be too overly concerned with that issue. Uh, sometimes you can take a little bit of a spritzer water from a spritzer bottle and moisten a few spots in the painting if you if you'd like to do that. But the painting is still quite damp. The the paper, so I'm not going to really be concerned with adding any uh, water to anything. And we'll start back in again, and we'll we have our um, I'll use a little bit smaller brush, and I'm going to go in with uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber, yellow ochre, raw umber, maybe a little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue, just to get a little bit darker tone. And then maybe we'll uh, we'll start to work in some of the darks here. I'll make sure to try to maybe keep this uh, line over here. And I'll add a little lizard and crimson, a little bit of blue. So the French ultramarine blue is going to give us a little bit of a shadowing effect. And again, if you go over a line or something, no big deal. And this is a little more difficult. I don't always paint with a lot of... Uh, uh, using more... So here we can go with... This is a dark there. Okay, that's the white canopy. Uh, let's let's let that be there. Um, now we're going to go with even more burnt sienna. Now burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue. We're going to get some of these darks here. So we're going to be in the cafe doorway here. Let me try to capture that. Uh, and things are pretty dark over here. Let's continue. Um, let's add some yellow ochre into this here. Burnt, uh, you know, burnt, uh, burnt. Sienna, French Ultramarine Blue, French Ultramarine. And I'm going around the figures here. And we can use a smaller brush, but I think we'll be okay with this brush here. So I'm not really too concerned there. Uh, we're going to try to do this Quickly, we're not going to fuss around too much. And what's good is we try to change up the colors here and there. And again, the more we just have fun with this and make it a loose feel. It's going to look better. This is all in shadow right here, what you're looking at now as I'm going. This is all the shadow, the lights coming down the center of the two buildings this way. So really all of these areas here with the figures, this is all in shadow. Um,
There's the couple boards on the wall, the chalk boards. Okay, so we have that. We are going to do more work in here, but for right now that looks pretty good. And then we'll try to tie in some of these the posts here. And then there's that curb line. We can just go around. Not worry too much about that. And um, let's get some of that cool shadow. Maybe we'll switch over to some cobalt. Cobalt here. And try to capture some of that shadow. And that's all right if it goes over there. So that's just some of the shadowing. We can just let that flow over there. Add some warm in there. Some cool cerulean blue. trying to control the shadowing here and the tonal values so that darkest dark is right here where the doorway is and if I can get this other darker tonal value I'm pretty much going to be set and that looks good some lighter tonal value over here but it's still a little bit more in shade or in warmer shadow it's not completely uh, in bright sunlight where the street is And then we can add some color. Let's use some cerulean blue maybe. There's someone with a cerulean blue shirt there. And we have uh, maybe someone with a cadmium red shirt here. We'll slowly keep working this uh, if again anything gets a little bit of we can always go in and add a few more darks to sharpen up some areas and we're gonna do that and don't forget we are not finished yet so don't ever worry don't worry if you're uh, if some of your lines become blurry on your watercolor paper you can we'll go back in and and believe it or not what we're doing right now is more the abstract feel of the painting so this is the abstract portion of the painting where it's not going to be com it's not completed yet so we don't worry we just keep working the washes and looking across from us onto our our photograph and we keep looking and adjusting but this is looking pretty good
this is drying. On the left-hand side, we will put details in there as well as over here. Okay, now we'll take a brush. We'll use a um, Raphael round brush. And we'll go in and do some details here. We'll use some yellow ochre, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. And these are some blue. Let's do some blue. We'll mix that color with some blue. There's some bluish color up here. Okay, that looks good there. Just some detail. Then we'll go in and we're just going to get some of those windows in. some of the uh, shadowing in. And as it gets closer, we see more And we see an awning over here. We can put that shadow in on the shadow side of that later. And some French Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna. And if you see something hasn't dried enough, you can just tap up what your, your brush stroke and you will just wait till that dries a little further. I think we're good. We can start doing our um, and a little bit of red. And keep working our darks, burnt umber, Ross, uh, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue. Here I'm just sliding my hand down the paper carefully. And if you find that your any lines get out of control, no big deal. And I'm just going to do this just lightly like that. Then I'll go in. And just straighten that line like that. 
So if it goes a little wavy, no big deal, just straighten it out, fill in some of the wave, wavy lines, like that. And it flares out there a little bit. And that's good. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then again, we'll do this line here. This is another street, street sign here. I get the first line like that, sliding my hand on the, uh, on my board. So I'm working on top of a board, so I have my hand sliding on the board, holding my brush still like that. And then, and then I fill in the areas that might be a little bit wavy. That's good. <clears throat> And we'll go with some cadmium red mixed with some lizard and crimson. Maybe a little bit of our burnt sienna too, and we'll we'll make the uh, red stop sign here. And the uh, grayish sign over here. And I'll maybe a little bit of shadowing up here on this building at the top. Warm and cool, cerulean blue. And that just uh, makes it a little more interesting along the sky area there. So we have that little bit of sky color. And again, we have uh, everything is looking good on this side over here. We can still work over here while we're in a couple more uh, some details over here. We can do a little splashing and some just to give it some interest uh, we could add a little bit of um, some shadow line here. This kind of lets us feel like that's the, the side of the building so that just gives us a little bit of tonal value change. Put some blue in there, cerulean blue. And a little more cerulean blue and yellow ochre over here on this side of the painting. That looks pretty good. And then we can go in and <clears throat> we can do some darker darks. Up here. And we're just going to use those uh, darker darks, which was the um, French Ultramarine Blue. Burnt Sienna and Yellow Ochre. And we just do some lines here. Like that. And another little bit of darker dark there just to give it some interesting uh, feel. 
and there as well. That, that two there, we're gonna, we're gonna, and then we're gonna make a dark, dark here, burnt umber, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue. And I try to fuse these together a little better, these shadow areas. And that's that doorway there, and that's fine now. And we'll go in and do our uh, figures, some figures here. We'll, we'll just have a little bit of the um, cadmium red and yellow ochre for the figures. see that they, uh, the figures are, are looking okay. We'll add a little bit of white for some accents. And if you see something again that uh, comes out a little bit uh, not quite perfect, you can take a tissue and just blot it a little bit and then go back in and we'll, this is going to be the, um, the waitress here. So we'll do that a little more. We'll use once this dries a little more. We'll do a little more work to the figures, but that looks pretty good. It's enough that we. It looks um, like it m blends in nicely with the rest of the painting, and um, we're going to go in with some more darks. Burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. And we'll be able to get our sign a little better with the darks there. And then those darks, we'll transfer them down here too. So we'll kind of fuse those together like this. Again, working around the painting, that's a good uh, way to describe this. You know, you work around the painting when there's areas that are dry, you can work there. So this area is more dry now. So I'm able to do some of that shadowing under the figures and tables. And... We're, ha we're having fun here. We're, we're just having fun. We're gonna, this is more of a loose painting, not as uh, heavy on the details, and we're going with a faster technique with uh, holding our brush up high and just trying to, you know, have a more loose feel to it. Um, I'm not used to painting this way as much, but um, it does c come out really looking very fun and uh, pleasant looking, so. 
let's keep working this. And uh, again, this is the light side of the picture, and then we have the darker shadows on this side. So we're continuing to follow in along that uh, idea. Let's take another break now. We've been working quite a bit. Let's take a break. I'll use the blow dryer maybe a little bit to dry off some areas, and we'll come back and we'll, we'll finish up. Okay, we're continuing to have fun here. We're going to uh, finish up our painting and just do the last bit of details on this. Uh, again, um, I'm always someone that will always mention, and you'll, you'll if you follow me on a regular basis, and I encourage everyone, if you... Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please uh, consider subscribing. We create paintings just like this every week uh, on this channel. So uh, we cover all the techniques and, and um, all the uh, fundamental things you need to know to create paintings uh, in watercolor like this and like other paintings. We do different styles. So there's always something uh, interesting going on. And um, I'm really hoping you'll uh, subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell as well. So this way you know uh, on the... Uh, each week when that uh, video is coming out. So again, I create videos weekly, so you'll have uh, lots of interesting uh, content uh, coming your way. And let's finish up this painting. Again, we had so much fun with this. We did a really good, solid uh, drawing for the uh, this painting. Uh, we call the drawing the bones of the painting, the pencil sketching, the pencil drawing, and then this is the flesh, the paint. So we'll put the flesh on our bones of our painting, and we're just going to do our finishing details now. So let's go in and um, we have, I'm going to make some darker mixture here, which is uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. And uh, let's see here. I know, I think I'm going to try... I'll use the uh, needle point brush here. We'll try to get the uh, and doesn't have to be perfect when we're doing um, signage and things like that. I think a little looser looks better versus you know getting a ruler out and trying to get every line perfect for our um, signage on buildings. If we do it real loosely, I think it looks better. So um, for this, we'll go with some more. Um, we, we've used this before, cadmium red, and some alizarin crimson, maybe a little uh, burnt sienna. And maybe a little blue there too, just to give us a little change and but the main thing is just use straight paint don't really don't add much water don't don't add water to this part here I would say we just leave this straight paint and then we'll go right in and we'll we'll just do this real quickly We can change it up a little bit, add some orange, maybe there, you know, just to make it a little different, change up the... pretty good and then we can add in some of the little darks behind there give it a little bit of that mysterious kind of feel to it Okay, perfect. Um, we can also French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. We can, we can dry off our brush a little bit, and we can do some uh, ornamentation here. There's some gorgeous railings here. We could do that there. And some, you know, some interesting little 
swirling lines. That's all. And there's some more. So I think if we add just a few, maybe that might uh, help a little bit just to And I just add a little dark there. That might be something where we might frame, we might, uh, so I'll just put a little, I can get a different brush here. I might take this brush and just do a little shadowing under here, like that, just to give a little different, interesting look. That's the shadow side of this building over here. And we said before that we, this was the opposite side of the building. I'll put a couple splashes here. And same with the, there, maybe a little dark splashes over here. Then what I'll do is I'm going to get my titanium white, take a little yellow ochre, and I just put it into the uh, titanium white like that. So I mix it in a little bit, mix it around in the, the little top portion of the white. And then we can do a couple of highlights. So there's some people sitting here and we're going to try to capture the light a little bit here and where we might not have had it before there we can add some light. And there might be some light over here. And a couple uh, lights and little small bits of light here and there can make a little uh, interesting uh, details to things. Just to, This is more of our detailed area here, the, the uh, signage and the light post, and then this area where the cafe is and the people having coffee. And that's the main focal points of the painting, and the rest is sort of kind of quieter in the painting. It's more subdued. You don't really notice it as much. We didn't do anything real. We did very carefree brush strokes everywhere. And that calms th those areas down. So those are not really the main focal points. The focal points are here. And also over here, we have a little bit of a focal point with the signage and the, and the a lamp. And if the lamp didn't come out perfect up top, good time. We can just go around that like that. A little bit of uh, paint around that there. And a little more highlights, I think. Just a few here. And if you find a highlight doesn't come out that good, you can you can blot it up a little bit with a paper towel or a um, tissue. You can add some more. That 
that looks good and then we'll I notice over here I kind of wanted to get that line in there a little better and then there's some more bollards here so again we wanted to make sure we got those in too as well those are important And we could put some shadowing on those a little bit. It's, uh... And those have a little bit of those. shadowing under here just to just a couple little tiny bits of shadow there like that and then there's a little bit of a shadow under here like that couple little bits of light on top of there okay I think that's uh, good let's um We'll peel off the tape here and see how it looks framed out. We had fun. This is, uh, you know, if we don't, I don't normally paint as much with larger brushes and things, but it is a lot of fun and it's always fun to challenge ourselves and, and try new things with watercolor. Um, it's a fun medium. You can try different techniques and they, they, in the end, they always help you to paint better and become a better artist. So don't be afraid of trying new techniques. Here we tried something a little different, more loose painting, larger brushes, mop brushes, and uh, doing the glazing technique mostly throughout the painting. And uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this. We'll zoom in maybe into the more of the focal point of the painting. This could be a painting too if you weren't... Uh, if you didn't have uh, if you didn't have the experience of painting like this, you know it takes some time to, to practice it. Maybe you, you know some some months of trying to paint more loosely like this. It does take time. I'll zoom in and we'll. We could always. Uh, So this is something where we could maybe uh, trim the painting down if we wanted to, make it a smaller painting. If we didn't like the way the lamp came out or some other part of the painting, you can always trim things down too and make it into a smaller painting. But this is a pretty good painting. It's, it's fun. I hope you had fun and, and let's uh, keep practicing. And I know everyone's doing a great job out there. Let's uh, uh, keep going and, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.